It's Liliana Rowena, and welcome to the second episode of the Tea Time Reading. So, for the first episode, I picked a an essay that really, really resonated with me that I read. And for the second episode, I thought it'd be interesting if I chose an essay by the same author, but that I fundamentally kind of disagree with. And without further ado, We'll be reading I Don't Need Things Like Friends. Also, if you've already read this and just want to hear my thoughts on it, you can skip to this timestamp here. I Don't Need Things Like Friends by Navala Takamoto. As the beginning of spring passes, I often hear people discussing a particular problem. I don't have any friends. What should I do? April comes around, and between new homerooms and the lake, their environment and surroundings change. People are caught daydreaming while their new peers are forming groups. Before they realize it, they are left all alone. When summer starts, most are released from this dilemma and enjoy, enjoy the break with the help of their old friends. However, even in the new season, there are some of these people who are still left alone. They show great strength and continue their lives by themselves. A maiden does not need things like friends. Maidens are sublime and aloof by nature. In stories, the male co-heroes will form cliques and carry out their activities together. Like in Tom Sawyer, Tom, Huckleberry Finn, and Getalobe joined together and the three of them made the 15 boys drifter chronicles, and then the 15 to be together. They weren't adult at all, but young ladies are different. Alice went through the perils of Wonderland by herself and Anju helped her brother escape from the bandit's mountain and was abandoned herself. If you think about Meg, she was always singing, people say I can do anything, but still. The witch girl Meg is always alone. Being a maiden is an absolute existence, and being absolute is by definition uniqueness that cannot com be compared to others. So maidens need no companions. Like Ken from the gangster movies, maidens have a cool independence. They say things like, if I open my heart to other people, I can make friends. But opening your heart to others is sacrilege, and you mustn't do that. A maiden's heart is her glittering jewel, and it should not be shown to others recklessly. A maiden stands coldly like a glass pane that seems like it would shatter if touched, encased in a hard shell for protection. And that maiden, tightly bound in a web of honey and gazing at you all alone, isn't she cute? There is no need for you to integrate yourself with the common people. It's okay if people say you're an arrogant child or a gloomy child. Thinking you can't eat lunch by yourself and making friends, that's a really silly thing to do. Being gorgeously aristocratic, like Madame Butterfly, is an indispensable part of being an independent princess. For me, my TV and potted, friend, potted plants are my close friends. Now, I find that essay really interesting um, because a parts of it make sense to me, like, hey, like, don't compromise yourself for other people, but I think having friends is super important, and especially nowadays in Lolita fashion, there's so many comms out there, and some of my Lolita friends are some of the best friends that, like, I've made in college. I really enjoy my time with them. I have a really good time getting to know these people. Like, it's a very different than what's being described in Navella Takamoto's essay. And I think that there could be a bit of a dangerous idea in isolating yourself from other people just because you feel like you're unique. I feel like you shouldn't compromise your uniqueness for other people to be friends with you. But I think it's totally okay to reach out to other people and to have friends. I, again, absolutely love the way that Takamoto writes in this. It sounds gorgeous, and I think maybe for individuals who are perhaps having a harder time making friends, this could be a very comforting thing for them to read. Hmm. I don't know. 
know if I always feel like that. I feel like I see, at least in where I live, I see a lot more like loner guys than I see loner girls. Like this, it's in this one, it says, hey, you know, it's okay if you're alone because Alice went through Wonderland alone. And I mean, I suppose that's true in a lot of stories. But as far as like people I know in my life, I definitely see that girls tend to be a lot more together in solidarity where I live anyways. And, you know, being choosy about who you hang out with is totally fine. I just don't know if I feel as if you have to absolutely isolate yourself to be a princess. Because to me, that idea of being an independent princess, you can still be an independent princess, but you can still be like kind and reach out to others to others and you know I feel like for me that's an integral part of the concept of a princess is that princesses are strong and they can get things done but they also are kind and reach out to other people and you know warm the room when they go in there and this concept that I'm starting to see in novellas essays seem to be more of this idea of like an aloof or like far away aristocrat, whereas for me, I feel like a princess makes makes things better, makes things warmer, um, makes a room more comfortable to be in, despite how unique she might be, or maybe because of it. Like, because the princess is that unique, or that, or Lily is that unique, and she can open herself up to friends, that they can feel like they can be joyous in their uniqueness too. Yeah, so that's everything I have to say about this essay. I don't think I have as much, I don't think I had as much to say because of needing, of feeling pretty much not agreeing with the majority of this essay, but I did enjoy reading it and I think it's a really important thing to try to understand a bit more the concept of where Lolita fashion came from and the culture that goes along with it, which is why I made this series. All right, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Liliana Rowena, out.